Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial on our channel. In this video we are going to be talking about uh, real-time Sudoku solving. Meaning that if you point your camera at a Sudoku puzzle, you would expect the application to solve it for you. As you can see it on the screen, I already have that. I am pointing my web camera at a Sudoku puzzle that I have printed on a piece of paper. And you can see that uh, these blue markers are showing me the corner points of the Sudoku puzzle and the console in IntelliJ is actually printing something. This, what it's printing, is a solution to the Sudoku puzzle. So my application prints the solution to the console as soon as it uh, is able to solve it. If it's not able to solve it, it just doesn't print anything. Um, on this piece of paper, I have a couple of the puzzles. So if I move it here, you can see that it's uh, solving this one also. And uh, let's move to this one, for example. Um, you can see that it's also solving this one, but it's having some troubles. Yeah, so it's solving this one also. I've actually tested it on a couple of these and it was able to solve them. Even if I tilt my camera a bit, you can see still that it detects the corners and it's still able to uh, solve them. Now it actually got stuck a bit. So let's see what exactly is happening. Yep, it's back. So uh, if I move it like this, you can see that it's still able to solve it. So regardless of the point in which the camera is, it's still able to solve this. Um, here it looks like it's having some difficulties. It's not perfect, but it does work. So um, all of this, so depending on your type of camera that you have, so if the image is blurry, depending on the lighting in the room and stuff like that, can make a, a job a bit harder for you, but all in all, it should be possible. So let's take a look at uh, how we actually implement this. In our application, we have a couple of classes here. The interesting for us is the application class, which is our main one. And here we are loading uh, the OpenCV library. So the, we are using Gradle for dependency management and we have the uh, dependency for OpenCV and also for deep learning for Java because that's what we are using to actually uh, classify the images, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Once we have loaded the uh, uh, OpenCV library, we create a JFrame in which we are going to be displaying uh, the image. That's what you saw at the beginning. And we also create this uh, JPanel, which is this camera feed. And we take the video capture. So we are taking the default camera. So index zero is default camera. And we start solving. So the start solving is just this runnable here to which we provide the key camera feed and the camera itself. Here we create an empty frame and while uh, so in this while loop we are uh, taking whatever the camera is returning and putting it to this frame. So we're reading the camera and putting it in this frame image. With the frame image we're doing some processing and then drawing it on the J panel. So let's take a look at the processing. So the processing is the important part that we are interested in. For processing, we are doing a similar thing as we did in uh, one of other tutorials I talked about, where we talked about actually solving how we can solve the Sudoku puzzle. Uh, it just wasn't real time. This is basically similar. Um, we are here creating uh, this empty processed frame where we are going to be uh, storing the processed image. We're doing some blur on it. We are changing it from the color to a gray one and we are doing finding edges using the Kenny algorithm and we are also dilating the image uh, to make the uh, points or the end contour a bit easier to detect. And then uh, based on the processed image, we try to find the corner points. So those are these blue markers that you saw at the beginning. So let's take a look at how we find the, con uh, how we find the contours and how we find the corner points. We have our processed image and we have our original image. So this is what our camera is sending. 
Here we are using the OpenCV method to find all of the contours. We are looking for the external ones and the chain approximation is none. So this is the important part. With the find contours, we'll find basically every contour that our camera can detect. And then we want to um, filter out noise, so to say. So every contour that has the area that's less than 1000, we are not interested in it. So we are filtering it out here. Once we have done filtering our contours, we are taking a look at the values that we have inside and we're finding the value. So we're finding the contour with the biggest value. So whatever area of that contour is the biggest one and we return its index so that we always know what's the biggest area because usually that's our Sudoku puzzle. Uh, here is just some check if there are no contours we are just returning immediately and then we are uh, trying to find the points of the biggest contour so based on the index we are finding the biggest one and we're trying to find the corner points and sort them here we're doing some approximation so you can see here if I jump here that we are doing some approximation to uh, be able to easily distinguish um, between things on the image and we are creating a sorted points array, meaning that uh, we are sorting our points because there is no guarantee that we will always uh, get the points in the same order. So we want to sort them so that we know that we start from the top left, then go top right and so on. So uh, clockwise, so that we always have our points sorted. And here you can take a look at the basic Java implementation. So we're just uh, sorting them out and yeah let's go back once we have our points and we have them sorted we want to draw them out so to do this we're just doing them check if the currently the point is empty or so if it's now and if it is now we don't want to draw it out otherwise we just draw a marker at this position so uh, we have found our points we have our corner points we're doing again some check just to make sure that they are valid if they're not we just return so this can happen when you're moving your camera fast around and stuff like that. So you will not be able to find them correctly. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, warp the image, meaning that if you move your camera to the side, so if you're um, not looking directly from the top of the image, so if you're looking from the side and stuff like that, we want to warp it so that it's a bit easier for us to detect all of the things that we need. Again, to this we are uh, passing in the current frame and we are passing in the corner points. And the warped, warped image is uh, just using this warp perspective method that we have in the uh, OpenCV library. And again, we are also uh, switching it to the gray image. And we are returning the warped one, the one that we found. So once we have found our warped image, we can actually go back. We are going to try to solve our puzzle. So to the method where we are solving it, we pass in the, the image that we just warped and we pass in our current frame. And inside of this, um, actually you can see here, we are not even using this original one, so the current frame. So we can get rid of that, which is good. Um, so let's just remove that from here and that. And so with the warped image, we are um, calculating the cell width and the height, which is just divided by nine because we are solving the Sudoku puzzle nine by nine. And we also want to remove all of the lines from the warped image. This is the method that we used also in our previous tutorial. So it's uh, exactly the same. We just do, the, do some thresholding on the image. Um, we switch the colors, so we switch the bits. And then using this uh, method, so hue lines P, uh, we are calculating all of the lines. And then once we have them, we are just drawing over them with the thickness of 13 so that they get uh, basically overwritten. So the black background and the black line over it, uh, it will just remove it and we won't be able to see it. After we have removed all of the lines, we calculate the cell size based on the properties that we have here. And in the next thing, we just want to uh, find our cells. So we are iterating through nine rows and nine columns moving along the x and y position, so uh, x and y axis. And then in the warp, warped image, we are cutting out our cells. And after we have cut them out, uh, we count the non-zero pixels, meaning that if it's just uh, a background, if it's empty, the count will probably be less than 50, and meaning that that's a, 
an empty space and we can immediately set zero to our matrix. Then after that, we are going in this else block where we have, we know that there is a digit, we just don't know which one. So we resize our cell uh, to uh, 60 by 60. So you can basically do here whatever you want. And then we use our train network to evaluate the image. Um, in this uh, project, I will be passing in all of the data that I used for the training of this network. But if you want to train it on your own, if you want to use your data, here you would do it. So you would actually store these cells. For example, uh, you take a Sudoku puzzle that you know how it looks like, you know the values. For example, the very first value that you have, so at uh, row zero and column zero is, I don't know, two. Um, then you would say, if I'm at row zero, uh, column zero, I will save this to uh, data training two. And if it's, I don't know, eight or something, then you save it to folder eight. And uh, you could do that. That's actually what I did. I, and I will also pass you in the, uh, the archive containing, I think, around uh, 17,000 images um, that I collected and sorted out by folders so that you can also use that for training. And in addition, I'm also passing in the, uh, some additional puzzles that you can print out and this network that's already trained on them should be able to recognize them. So um, with our network, we're just calling this evaluate image uh, method that will come to later. And it should give us an estimated value. So it, whatever it thinks that digit is, it will give it to us and we save it into side of this matrix. And then we go to our uh, Sudoku util after we have went through all of the rows and all of the columns and we try to solve the matrix. If it's solved, we print it out. Um, so nothing special here and the solving of the Sudoku matrix uh, can be found on this page to explain all of this algorithm. So that's not my code. I just copied pasted it from there to save a bit of time. So you can take a look at here and uh, just see how it's done. It's actually quite well explained. And I will also link it in the description of the video so you can uh, go to this link if you're interested. So the next thing that we want to do is um, maybe take a small look at how we can train our network. So as I said here, you can collect the data, meaning that you are saving it in the training uh, folders. And then in the training folders, uh, you would uh, iterate through them with a data classifier. I've already created one here. So if we jump to the data classifier um, class, you can see that we have the resources folder path. So this is an absolute path, which probably will not work for you, uh, depending on where you store your projects. So you might want to change this part so that it works. The height and the width of the cells or images that we want to evaluate is 60. Uh, you can change that, but you also have to make sure that when you're saving images that you also change the size there. A uh, number of the samples that are used for training, you need to adjust them if you have more. Currently, there is like 181 in the training folder. So that's why this value is here. And same with the samples for testing. And the number of outcomes is always uh, 10. So here in this uh, data classifier, when we are training the network, we are loading all of the configuration needed for it and creating our data set iterator so that we are able to iterate through all of the folders and we are building our model. So let's take a look at the data set iterator first. It's the same one as I used in the previous tutorial and it's also copy pasted from the, uh, from the page of the deep learning for Java. Um, library. So from their documentation, um, this can be found there. And they're doing some classification on some images. So with that, what they have here, we are just going through the folders, we're going then to the digit folders, loading all of the images using this native image loader and doing some processing on them, then creating this input and output arrays, and basically storing the data loaded from the image inside of this. After that, we're creating a data set. Uh, so we're merging the input and the output and uh, converting it to a list, shuffling it so that we have some randomness here. And we're say, saying that this um, uh, iterator will just take them in batches of 10. So with our uh, data set iterator, if we go back and we pass it to the build model uh, method, again, the configuration for the network itself is again copied from the same page. Uh, because yeah, they already have a, a lot of examples for the image classification, so no need to do anything there. You can just copy paste it and use that. And after we have 
created the configuration, we create the model object and initialize it. We set our listener, so this is just so that we can print the result every 500 iterations or whatever you want. And we fit it with the data set iterator, meaning that here you're saying, yeah, go train with this data and it will be able to iterate it because we passed the iterator. After it has finished iterations, after it has finished uh, training on all of the data that you provided, so depending on the image count, uh, it may take some time, uh, we do some evaluation based on the testing set. So from the testing set, we take all of the images we can find and uh, print out the stats at the end. And of course, after we have done, we also write the model. So our trained uh, model will be written here. I'm already providing you one in the uh, models folder. So um, that one is uh, used, that one is actually trained on this uh, PDF, which I printed and then uh, I trained it on those puzzles. So if you want to do use uh, some other puzzles, which have, for example, maybe different font or something else, you need to collect that data and then train it on that. You can, of course, combine all of this. So the more data you have, uh, it will be more precise and you will be able to handle uh, many puzzles. And uh, maybe let's take a look at our data util. Uh, here we have one method where we are using to load a model. So this is used when we are uh, creating the image utils because this is the network that we are reusing. So it's our pre-trained network. And we also have evaluate image method. So this is the one that we already saw uh, to which we are providing our mat image and also our trained network. We are here just uh, again creating the same uh, data set iterator so that we are able to uh, iterate it. Uh, and basically it's exactly the same as we did in the previous uh, tutorial. We are just uh, using the image loader to um, load the image and we load it as a row vector. So we create this image array and we put it in our input. And then in the data set, we create a number of outcomes, which is just one because uh, so array with one row and 10 uh, columns because um, we have only one image here. And then our uh, network predicts it and we collect the predicted value and just uh, return it as an integer. So basically that's everything here that we have. So this is in the, um, where we are iterating through all of our uh, cells and where we are estimating the value. So that would be everything for this tutorial. Hopefully it was uh, well understood. If not, uh, just leave me a comment um, and I will try to get to you as soon as I can. If uh, anything else is unclear, also you can uh, send me an email. It's linked on my channel. And yeah, I guess I will see you in the next one.